We're back for part two of the Bible says this, what say you? I'm speaking today about uh, uh, Reverend Barber's sermon, his great speech that he gave at the DNC convention. I tell you, that man brought the house to their feet. I mean, look, in terms of delivery, in terms of style, let me tell you something. Very few preachers walking this planet can say a word like the Reverend Barber, and I really thank the Lord for him. I respect him, and uh, 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 but 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 I have substantive disagreements with the things that he had to say, and that's what I'm talking to you about today. Now, I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. You're watching part two of my uh, presentation as I dissect his message that he gave at the Democrat Party convention. Uh, he brought the house to their feet, as I just mentioned. I, I didn't see the whole speech, but I have the speech right here, so I'm going by the transcripts. Now, uh, he said this. He said, uh, I am worried about uh, the way faith is cynically used by some to serve hate, fear, race, racism, and greed. Now, my question is, what is Reverend Barber's definition of hate? If he's using hate the way hate is, has been used of late, if you disagree with the LGBTQB and all the rest of the acronyms that describe this group of people, if you disagree with their lifestyle, you are now branded a hater. And if that is true, then the Bible is a book filled with hate speech. Is, is, is this the hate that he's talking about? Is it not a reasonable, is it not reasonable when you look at what's going on in the world, you look at what's going on in Europe, when you look at what's going on in Germany, when you look at what's going on in all these places where they have allowed uh, uh, Muslim and Islamic refugees to pour in like water. And you see the murder, the rape of women uh, that's taking place, the, the, the killings that are going on, and even what's going on here. And we can't vet the people. Is it not reasonable to uh, have a forbidden? Uh, a sense of foreboding when the president of the United States and, and other elected officials who will constantly be surrounded by armed guards for the rest of their lives uh, tell us that we shouldn't be concerned as they bring these people in. And, and, and the FBI has have admitted and the CIA has admitted that they cannot vet these people. They have no database to determine who these people are. The president tells us that tell us that it's a bunch of women and children. But you know what? I trust these more than I trust his words. And when the when the when the media shows the pictures of the refugees, all I see are, are men who actually should be at home, Syrian men who should be at home defending their homeland. Is it is it racism? Is it racism? Uh, uh, is it greed to agree with the scripture? I want to know what he is referencing to throw out terms and not to define them. You, 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 these are labels that in many ways are, are meaningless because they're left to private interpretation. Now, he says this in his speech. Um, he goes on to say, we need to heed the voice of scripture. We need to listen to the ancient course, which, uh, which, quote, deep calls unto deep. Now, when he used this, this phrase, deep calls unto deep, uh, he's quoting from Psalms 42, actually, Psalms 42 and 11. And, and the literal definition of deep calling unto deep, when, when David wrote this, David is actually saying, the deep waters are calling to other deep waters. They are conspiring to drown him. Psalms uh, uh, 42, you will find where David uh, talks about this. 42 and 7 says, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of the water spouse. That is the noise of the waters that comes together at the waterfalls. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. 
David is saying as he contemplates and he's 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 cast down. Verse five, he even asks himself, why art thou cast down, O my soul? David is in a, in a bad place at this point. And he says that even as he hears the waters, the deep waters are even conspiring against him. So, uh, you know, you can take things out of context when you context when you're preaching to an audience of people who don't read the Bible. So deep calls unto deep. Uh, the prophet Isaiah cries out. Look at look at this uh, quote. What I'm interested in seeing you doing, I'm direct quote, what I'm interested in seeing you doing, saith the Lord, as a nation is, pay my people what they deserve, share your food with the hungry, do this and then your nation shall be called the repair of the breach. Now, what he just quoted was Isaiah uh, chapter uh, 58. And verse 12. Now let's read Isaiah 58 and 12. Let me, let me read his quotation again. He says, the prophet Isaiah cries out, quote, what I'm interested in seeing you doing, saith the Lord as a nation is. Now he's quoting Isaiah. Pay people what they deserve. Share your food with the hungry. Do this and then your nation shall be called the repair of the breach. And by the way, the reference repair of the breach, guess what? That's mentioned one time in scripture. So the Lord actually said that they would be the repair of the breach one time. So here he is quoting from a scripture that's only mentioned one time. So, so much for being concerned with those who say so much about that which the Bible says so little. But let me read the scripture. Isaiah 58 and verse 12 says, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Again, the Reverend Barber say, says, pay my people, pay people what they deserve. Share your food with the hungry. Do this and your nation shall be called the repair of the breach. And he says that this is what the prophet Isaiah cries out. Well, again, Isaiah 58 and 12. And, and, and in Isaiah 58 and 12, this is the only place where Isaiah uses, uses the phrase repairer of the breach. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou and uh, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. So uh, when you read the actual scripture, you see here that he, that his quote of Isaiah is not even biblically accurate, my friends. Now, it may sound wonderful and you may feel good, but th this is not what Isaiah says. It's not what he's alluding to. He, he's speaking of, he's telling the people, first of all, he's, he says in Isaiah, uh, if you read verse 1 of Isaiah 58, he says, cry aloud and spare not. He says, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. He says, preach the truth and don't spare anybody. Tell everybody why they, they're wrong. Isaiah believed that LBGTQ was wrong. Isaiah believed that uh, uh, idolatry, the worship of false gods is wrong. Isaiah spoke against that. Isaiah only recognized uh, the God of the Bible, uh, Yahweh, as the true and living God. Isaiah didn't recognize the God of the Hindus, the God of Islam and all those gods. You won't find where Isaiah joined hands and prayed with uh, the leader of, a, of another religion. You won't see where Isaiah joined hands and prayed with a man whose God was not the Lord. So Isaiah here is being misquoted. Uh, 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 Reverend Bible goes on, says, Jesus a brown-skinned Palestinian Jew. <sighs> we, could, we could talk about that. Call us to preach the good news to the poor, uh, the broken uh, and the bruised, and all those who are made to feel unaccepted. All right, let's go to what Jesus actually said in the book of St. Luke. We're going to St. Luke. Uh, and by the way, Jesus was quoting Isaiah, St. Luke chapter 4. And we're going to read Luke 4 and verse 18. 
4.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because it hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are, are bruised. Now, where is in this passage uh, all those who are made to feel unacceptable? Where is that in this passage? Now, if you're going to quote the Bible, you have to be fair to it. And, 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 and I'm for reaching out. Je Jesus came. Jesus Christ came to save everybody. The Bible says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus says, whosoever will, uh, the Bible declares, whosoever will, let him come. Jesus says, Matthew 11, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, Matthew 11 and 28, and I will give you rest, but take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your soul, for my yoke is easy, but my burden is light. But when Jesus calls for people, people got to come, and they can't bring their own lifestyle and the way they live and, and, and get Jesus to accept them and, and change his rules of holiness to accept them. People got to come and find out what G the teachings of Jesus are and submit to him. You got to accept him as Savior and submit to him. So here you don't see, and, and I believe in preaching to the poor. And let me just say this about ministering to the poor. Just because one ph ph uh, philosophical belief is that the way you help the poor is you come up with new government programs to give the poor handouts. That's one way to help the poor. And there's another philosophical belief that believes that you help the poor by providing jobs and opportunities. You help the poor by, you know, giving uh, choice in, in, in school choice. You know, some poor kids provide, uh, perform well in, in the public school system. Others do better in a private Christian school or in a private school, you know. And since both, you know, everybody pays taxes, why not have vouchers where kids could have a choice in the education? The public school system is certainly failing black boys big time. Reverend Barber knows this. And they say, well, the answer is we got to come up with new programs. Well, we spent trillions. We spent, oh, my God, money, money, money. And, and, and nothing, nothing has happened because the, school, the money is allocated to the district rather than being allocated to the child. Most districts have no incentive to teach the poor little black kid because when the kid drops out of school, the district doesn't lose any money. You have that empty chair, but you still got that $15,000 that has been allocated to that child. You allocate the money, uh, allocate to that district. You allocate the money to the child. You lose, if the school loses the child, the school loses the money. Guess what? The teacher will teach a little harder because she understands if you lose the child, you lose the money. So we may disagree, but even at that, both Parties, both philosophies believe that the poor should be helped, but they may just disagree on how to help the poor. All right. But Jesus in, 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 in Luke uh, 4 and 18 was talking about preaching the gospel of salvation to the poor and to, to heal the brokenhearted, those who are sorrowful, and to preach deliverance to the captives, those who are in bondage with the truth of God and the giving of sight to the blind, the suffering, and to set at liberty them that abuse. He was not speaking of a government program and in terms of Using the word accepted, Reverend Baba says, and all those who are made to feel unacceptable. Now, the word accepted is mentioned in verse 19. It says, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the acceptable year of the Lord. And Reverend Baba knows this, but he knew that his audience didn't know is a reference to preaching the present age of grace, salvation by grace. The Bible says today, while it is called today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The acceptable year of the Lord was the age of grace that Jesus ushered in. That all you got to do is accept Jesus as Savior and he will come into your life and he will save you by grace. And the good reverend knows this, but he, he also knows that he's list, he was preaching to a people both there and sadly who watch on television who doesn't study who doesn't pay attention to the things that are being said. Now, my friends, I am accurately, I'm not eisegeting, I am exegeting the word of the Lord. I'm not adding to it, I'm saying what God says. The truth is, the Bible says this. 
What say you? I'll be back at, with part three in just a moment.